Anyone else? Okay. As uh, many of you are aware, uh, this is uh, Councilman Benz's last meeting. Uh, he is uh, moving on to a, a new challenge to serve uh, both Fort Wayne and Allen County, and uh, he's taken on a, a big step. And uh, with that, with the permission of the Vice President, I would uh, like to turn over the gavel for the remainder of the meeting to uh, Councilman Benz. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Thank you. Switch your name. Switch seat. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> he did not know this was he coming. Did not. <laughs> It's like riding a bike. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, first of all. I, this is very unexpected and uh, a little humbling, so I appreciate it. All right. So the first item on the agenda then would be the health department. And a number of requests. Good morning, Tracy Mishner, Assistant HR Director. Uh, sorry, Mindy Waldron, Administrator of the Health Department. Thanks for moving us up, much appreciated. Would you like us to do them one by one or all together as a group? All, all together seems to be the, uh, yeah, just work your way down the line. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. So first up is a public health nurse immunization outreach pack 5-256,896. This was a part-time position and as you know um, with nurses it's very hard to find them so uh, making this a full-time position will be great. It is grant funded and just a reminder that all these positions are out of the health department funds and not any general funds are used. This was past 3-0 at Prisoner Committee. Do you want me to speak to each one or do you want her to give you the update on all three? How would you like to do it? Um, one at a time? And then I'll just keep going down. Vital records clerk, um, we, this is a new position. It is scored the same as the rest of the vital records clerk. This is just an additional position. It is a 2-1 at personal committee. And then the immunization, and then we had an LPN PAC 3. We need to reclassify this position to immunization nurse and outreach coordinator to PAC 4. Um, this position, the level of responsibility and um, difficulty of work has increased and so it's needed for this position. It has add, um, added a lot of duties including making sure that they, all the immunizations and vaccines and everything are kept, um, it, make sure that they're rotated and everything and that's a huge, huge cost to the health department. So we have to make sure that someone is carefully looking at all those expiration dates, ordering appropriately, et cetera. So this position was passed to one at personnel committee. Question. Does that keep it consistent then with all the LPNs on the county if we have any other LPNs or not? Yes, we do have L other LPNs and this is moving to a PAT 4. So it could be a nurse or LPN, but the LPN is taking on more responsibility than other LPNs within the Thank, you. Thank you, Tracy. So for the first one, which is, uh, it was a part-time position under another grant, that grant went away, so that position went away and we were never able really to keep somebody employed on it anyway without benefits. It's very difficult, you don't go to nursing school most of the time to work part-time. So when we got this particular grant, which is a near three-year with potential continuation grant, and it has specific uh, duties on it, not just tasks, it has actual RN duties. We have to have a nurse and it can be full-time with benefits, so we decided to re-add that position and help have oversight for all the outreach to all of, say, the fire departments each year. We do their flu shots. This year is an exception. Um, and then any outreach we do, which is usually somewhere upwards in 20 different sites that request uh, that we come do things for their large uh, staff or for their volunteers, doing the city-county clinic here, all of those things. 
um, as well as all the tasks within the grant. With the expansion of the refugee resettlement program this year in the United States, just to give you an idea, both of these nurse positions will now be retasked to that for the next year. So what has happened is normally we'll resettle in the United States somewhere between 60 to 70,000 uh, refugees. That was through the last probably eight year average. Last year they resettled 10,000. So again, 60 to 70 is normal, 10,000 last year. This year they're planning 120,000 plus. We're in the top five of resettlement sites. There's no choice. This is a federal government move. Under the statutes, the health departments in the counties they resettle, and Allen County is the largest one, they, we have 30 days to see them all. We're not able to do that at this point. We're out 45 at minimum because we're getting them weekly now. Most are Afghan. Some can come on their own now. So we don't get notice, and that's very, very difficult. So we're struggling to even stay afloat. We've got folks there only for that, so we can run the mass vaccination site and the test site, so we've got a couple nurses there. So this position is also covered under that grant. So we need both of these to continue with what we need to do. So like I said, normally it would be about outreach, doing the normal immunizations. We are going to likely have someone help with the inventory part, but refugee assistance for both of these nursing programs will be the highlight for the next year as best we can. So both, both of the nurses are very similar. We have a current LPN that is full-time. Um, the way we wrote the position is, is LPNs about the lowest that we would accept for the particular position. With the experience this person has, they lend themselves to moving right into this. But should they leave, it can be an RN, it can be, it, it can be anybody that has that type of training. So those are the two positions. You have them in front of you. If I, I'm, I'm glad to answer any specific questions or concerns about both of the nursing positions. One grant funded, one under the health fund. And that, and that grant fund uh, that you spoke of is specifically um, correlated to the refugee issue? Is that it is correlated to COVID, regular immunizations and getting folks caught up because there's significant, significant delays currently. As, and it has all these, all the other duties as assigned and including refugee immunizations and testing and treatment. So all of that was linked under one. When we applied and when we thought we were going to use it for all outreach, that was before we were told the number of refugees being resettled. So unfortunately, that will be the impetus. It is listed on there, yes. Have they given, and that's for Allen County specifically, um, right? The, this, the what is refugees it? coming to Allen County. You're not yes. taking this person on the road. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Oh, goodness, no. And These are all coming here. They, they tend to just show up. So yeah. we have to do chart prep. It, it's a significant um, challenge have currently. Have you been given a number of what to expect? Probably somewhere in the 300-plus range, and we get normally 100 to 125, and that's stretching it. I don't know if you will remember seven to eight years ago when we had to come hire at least five staff. We, well, actually, what we did was convert them from doing the things that they did to being refugee-related. Those were the days when we had 120. Maybe we went up to 150 one year. Um, that was a challenge. So going so, doubling those without any funding. And is that 300 a month? No, that's, that's a year. Um, and if you can understand what happens with these, these folks. And when we've resettled Burmese, which were the largest Burmese resettlement site outside of Burma itself, we are now switching to a different language, uh, different health issues. The fact that we don't get the same medical records that we would have or that we normally do in a normal resettlement year because it's planned well in advance. They have several levels of testing for a year before they can even leave the country so that we don't inherit a lot of medical issues that are at our cost. This is not that way. Move them out, get them to a camp, then they can come wherever they want to come. They have a lot of folks here, so they're coming here. So it's very, very different. And, the, and to take on these people, we take on their care. We don't just take on their, see them in 30 days, do tests, do vaccinations. We take on their care. If they come with TB, if they come with HIV, which they do many times, we, can, we take that on and we'll see them for many years. So getting 300 is a lot because they come in groups of about 15 to 20 a, a week sometimes. Sometimes we'll have a, a week where they don't come and then we'll have double the next week. We don't know. Normally we would know. We don't know now. Um, and having only a couple staff there is difficult for them to see them. It'll take all day for them to even see them. And we have a part-time doc who's only there one day a week. She's doing most of her things at night from home to prep the charts when we call and say, we got 18 that walked in today, need you to see them somehow tomorrow. It's very difficult. 
Thank you. Mr. President, may I speak?